Hey, this is Kale, the Venom Teacher. Today I'm doing a segment called Rattlesnake Safety uh, Pets, and specifically I'm going to be talking about dogs. So I get a lot of questions about dogs and how to keep them safe, and dogs will run right up to rattlesnakes and bark at them and often get bit in the face. So today I'm here with Spike. Uh, Spike is my little helper here. Uh, it's actually my sister's dog, and uh, here is a rattlesnake. So if you are, it's a stuffed snake. But if your dog is walking and you see a rattlesnake, you just need to keep them on a tight leash. This is one of the most important things. You definitely don't want to be walking with your dog and not on a leash, uh, especially when you're in areas where there could be rattlesnakes. So this way I can control them. If he starts to run up to the rattlesnake and bark at it, we can pull them back. And it is the easiest way to stay safe on rattlesnakes when you have a dog. Okay. Yep. So uh, another thing to watch is if you live where rattlesnakes come into your yard and you let your dog in and out, uh, you really should check for snakes. So you can come over here like this. I would take sticks and just kind of move it. Make sure that no rattlesnakes came in your yard overnight. Uh, and then you can let the dog out to do his business. Perfect timing, Spike. So this is Spike, and the reason that I'm using him in this video is because uh, Spike has been through uh, quite an ordeal. So he is my sister's dog, uh, and they used to live uh, way out in the desert where their backyard was opened up to the desert. And Spike has actually been bit by rattlesnakes twice before. And if you look really close right here, you can actually see uh, the scar from one of the bites right here and here. So he uh, is the kind of dog that tends to just run right up and get in the face of it snakes. And so he did that one year, one summer, got bit, he had to go get antivenom and uh, he wasn't doing so good. And uh, I'm going to show you some pictures of that right now. Uh, and you can see that uh, he's all swelled up in this photo. I mean the, the venom causes a lot of swelling but the antivenom stopped it. And so the very next year we kind of thought, well that was a painful experience and he learned from it but he didn't. The next time he found a rattlesnake he ran up to it again and he got bit in the face again and he needed an antivenom. And so Spike has been through a lot. He is a real trooper, but uh, we eventually, my sister had him go through a dog uh, rattlesnake avoidance training for dogs. And so they'll, they'll actually train him to be able to, to, to learn to avoid rattlesnakes. So if you ever heard about rattlesnake avoidance training, uh, I can tell you a little bit about it. Uh, there's a lot of people ask me, does it work, does it not work? When we had them do the rattlesnake uh, training, they actually put a shock collar around their necks, and uh, it's really, it was really hard to watch. Uh, the, the guy that came had a rattlesnake, and uh, every time uh, he would see the rattlesnake, they would shock him. Uh, and it really scared Spike. I mean, he just freaked out. He, he, it was really hard to watch. And they did it over and over and over again. And so eventually the uh, dogs learn that every time they see a snake or smell a snake, uh, that they, they need to stay away from it. So they actually recommended doing the training every year because the dogs can forget. So after a year, uh, we tried a little experiment with Spike. Uh, we, my sister brought him out in their backyard and I brought a snake who was on the other side of a chain link fence and I set the rattlesnake down. Uh, right when Spike saw the snake, he turned and ran immediately to the house. Uh, and actually, my, my sister picked him up. And so, uh, I, it seemed to work. Uh, he, uh, we we're not quite sure, uh, you know, in a real setting if he'd get bit again, but he, he never did get bit again. So, uh, if you're thinking about doing a rattlesnake avoidance training, uh, you know, look it up. I, I have heard success stories from it. I have heard some people say that they they did it, and then the next year their dog got bit again. So uh, it, it might work, it might not. Every dog's different. Some uh, train better than others. But if you do live in an area and you worry about your dogs, I think it's worth a try. Thanks, Spike. Good boy. Good kitty. Go on, you little kitty. He's not going to hurt you. So cats, uh, when you're trying to keep them safe around rattlesnakes, they actually do a lot better than dogs do. 
uh, when they get bit by rattlesnakes, they tend to not affect them as much. So one of my cats got bit, uh, and this is some of the photos that we took after the bite. So you can see that the, the face is all swollen up. You can see that there's a wound, but they, they healed really quickly. The vet said that they didn't even, didn't even need antivenom. But I would recommend keeping your cats uh, in your house. You know, I, I wouldn't let them go outside. Uh, they, they are curious. Uh, they might, you know, play around with rattlesnakes and tap them in the face, and that's when they get it. Remember these? Remember these rattlesnakes? Oh, your friends. They're friends now. Yeah. You stay away from these guys, huh? You stay away from them. You hear that? You stay away. Y you know we're rolling, right? <laughs> oh, it's okay. <laughs> If you like this video, thanks for watching. I'm really glad that we had our special guest Spike here to teach us about how to stay safe around rattlesnakes. And uh, just a last note to remember that if you ever uh, do have a dog that's bit by a rattlesnake, that you do need to get them to an emergency vet clinic immediately. So they do need antivenom. Uh, dogs can die from rattlesnake bites, so it should be treated seriously. And uh, if you like it, uh, comment below and uh, subscribe. Thanks for watching.